know, I know my mom used to tell me, man, growing up, like sometimes people can feel death upon them, you know. And I, I saw in some of your interviews that uh, Pimp C was with you or at your house right before he passed. Do yeah. you remember if was he acting any little weird or anything like that? Did you notice anything different or strange about him that night before he passed? Man, you know, um, I kind of did, but I don't. I don't really want to speak on it. But uh, I kind of did. But I think he was just more tired. Shadow from thy candlelight. I see a bit of white. I see the leaning stripes. I'm leaning to the right. Oh uh, yeah, man, you already know what time it is, man. It's your boy Courtney Moffey Johnson, you know what I'm saying, representing that Hip Hop Weekly. And I'm most definitely privileged to be chilling here with, uh, in my opinion, the greatest producer ever. I'm not, I'm not just saying that, but I really felt like that since I was like 12, 13 years old, coming up in Memphis, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there chilling with the one and only DJ Paul, man. What's going on, dog? What's up, Moffey? Yeah? All I mean, day, man. You said it on every interview, man, greatest producer? <laughs> no, man, that's the first time I ever said that, John, dog. For real. Yeah, yeah for real. Man, I really mean you, that, man. man. Thank you, thank you. I do my best. So I want to kick it off like this, man. I want to talk about money. All right. Let's talk about money out the gate, man. Let's do it like this, man. I'll say, uh, we know you for partying, you know what I'm saying? Being a dope producer, you know what I'm saying? Having fun and stuff, but let's talk about keeping money. Because right. I, I watched some of your interviews lately. It's like, what you said, you said something like, uh, if you can't pay for it in cash, then you feel like you don't need it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that, that rule don't apply for everybody, so don't don't try this at home, y'all. But uh, it's just basically how I've always been, you know, from the minute that I bought my first house, man. Juicy bought two houses next door to each other. And uh, it was $125,000, which is a lot of money in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, we bought two nice houses, brand new. Nobody never lived in them for next door to each other. And uh, we financed it because that's what we thought was the best thing to do. You know, we right. were like teenagers. And uh, we bought these houses. And uh, I looked at the paper and uh, it said over years the house was going to cost like $400,000. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what is it? It was like, it's a finance charge. And I'm like, fuck that. I'd rather just give you 120 right now and be done with it. Right. Like, what the fuck? So, you know, that's just how I look at stuff. Like, it's so many other things. It's a, these finance companies rape you, left and right. And there's just so many other things you could do with that money and invest it because, like, you got to look at, like, if you get a finance and the finance is, um, you know, three and a quarter percent or something like that, your money sitting in the bank ain't making you three and a quarter. It's making right. you probably point zero 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 three or some bullshit. That makes so, sense. It don't, it don't make no sense in finance. It's just uh, buy cash and be done with it. Where do you think you got that mindset from? Like My dad. Your dad. My dad. My dad, uh, he dibbled and dabbled in real estate, and he owned a pest control company and this and that. And that's why I own a real estate company now, because being a kid watching my daddy do it, you know, just on his own. I got people that work for me, obviously, but my daddy did it on his own. I would be in the car with him. And trip him just a little bit of kid watching him go over there and fix the plumbing and all that shit itself. You know what I'm saying? So I got it from him. What's dope? Sampling. I don't know what's going on right now in the game, but everybody's sampling y'all stuff. I know you know it. You know yeah, that I mean, is three shit. Might be like a new pair of jeans <laughs> or Jordans or something right now. Like it's, everybody's sampling that shit. It's like super popular all over again. You know, people. Yeah, nineties like, are bad. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said. Design a uh, designer, Ray Shermer, uh Cardi B, G Easy. Yeah. Um, even Drake, Drake sample job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How does that process work when some uh when artists want to sample stuff from you know Three Six Mafia? Is it a phone call or do they just kind of do it? Well, they just contact uh, our publishing company, and uh you know we just go from there. We figure out you know what we want to front, what we want a, a unit percentage wise, how much depending on how much of the song they use. I base the percentages off that, and uh, we just go from there. So, yeah. is it basically up to you guys to yay or nay it? Yeah. Can you be like, nah? You know, yeah, no. yeah. If I don't like it, I'd be like, nah, because it's, it's a bunch of them that came through there, and I didn't like it. And I was like, man, you know, just I try to be nice and try it again, man, and you know, send it back to me. Right. Okay. You want to represent you right. 
Yeah, I don't. No, I just don't really want them to pay me the money if it's not gonna be something that's gonna work for them. Okay. Cause in the end, they they gonna be like, damn, it's for dollars money. This song ain't even a hit. But keeping it real though, is is it flattering when they sample your stuff like that, or do it low key kind of piss you off a little? No, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Okay, okay. Who the fuck don't want to just sit <laughs> at the house and go to the mailbox and get a check for free? That's crazy. I love it. They yeah. can sample that shit my whole life. I hope they do. I know we most definitely enjoy all your production, you know what I'm saying? Especially with like you and Juicy, the stuff y'all did with Outkast, mm -hmm. that was huge. Yeah. Uh, you know, Young Buck Stump and stuff like that. Well, my question to you is, why we ain't never hear more DJ Paul production on like Future or, or Migos or even Fabulous, you know what I'm saying? Usher, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't know, man. You know, um, I just, uh, I, I'm down to do that, you know. I did a lot of stuff for uh, 2 Chain, so, you know, I love Future, you know, and, um, Fabulous, all those guys. Fabulous, my brother. But, uh, you know, I, I would do more. I just, I'm real low key with it, man. You know, I don't really be out there like shopping myself like that because, you know, I just, I only like to fool with like people, you know, I fool with. That's interesting. But now I'm, I'm cool to fool with new folks all the time. So, man, you know, future, if you're watching this, I love to do something <laughs> with you, man. But, you know, I'm just like real, real low key with it. And when I go in the studio with somebody, I like it to just be like more low key. I don't like a bunch of people running around. Not if I'm doing production. If we just listening to it, right? I like just or just building it. If we just listen to it, yeah, you can have me, and my fuzzer in the studio. We always do that. But if I'm building a production, I like it just me or just me and the artist. And I just like to just keep it like low key like that, so I can concentrate. Now I want to go into the Memphis sound, man. Damn, man. Like I feel like. Not just me, a lot of people feel like you created the Memphis sound, you know what I'm saying? The rolling high hats, the kick drums. Yeah. Even the you know the samples for the movie samples before the songs come on stuff. Yeah. Does, does it bother you when the new Memphis artists don't really follow that template, go with the Memphis sound? They kinda go with either like the Atlanta sound or uh, trap yeah. sound, but not like the traditional no, the Memphis don't, sound. It don't bother me because you know, it's like um you had to you had to go with the times, you know, uh you still sitting around here trying to use a rotary phone, man, you'll be out of your fucking mind. Right. You know, and that's what they would probably be doing if they try to do that Memphis sound, you know. Okay. When they start doing the more Atlanta sound, that's what was going on. You know, that's what was going on and that was what's that's what's popping. So they just, you know, they had to go with the flow uh down with the times to uh, make it work and it worked for, you know, a lot of them. It's okay. still working for a lot of them. So, you know, shout out to all the Memphis rappers, black youngster, you know, money bag, yo, what's happening? You know, they just gotta they gotta go with that. But in the end, when I listen to their music, it got Memphis in it. Right? Yeah, yeah, it got the Memphis. It gonna yeah. have some Memphis in it. If it's just the lyrics or whatever, the words, so it's gonna have some Memphis in it. It ain't gonna be no all the way like the uh, the the Atlanta sound or something like that. It's gonna have a little that Memphis grit up in there. Okay. Yeah. That's Always. All right. Um, I've interviewed a couple people so far. You know what I'm saying? Uh, from One Twelve, Scott Storch, to even. Kane from Minister Society. Uh, Tyra Turner, shout out, you know what I'm saying? But you know my first interview was, man, ever? What? It was with a group in Memphis called Cedar Six. For it real? It was my first interview and it was <laughs> their first interview. My nephews. Ever. Yeah. Shout out Cedar Six. Put a blunt between these two fingers, I believe I'd be at peace. Thank you, oh my, how time flies. But mirror one, the eyes I perceive. ACD, like CAC, hypnotize my mind, Frank. Medication for the migraine. From weeds to beans to cane, I got a variety. To up with sobriety, away from society. Solitude, I cruise, I'm feeling narcotics. And I'm in the body, serotonin, dopamine. Rush the brain, I know I feel. Try to find friends on cloud nine, but when I come down, it's only me. So I. Solo, solo with my juice. Solo, solo with my cuckoo. I'm lighting gas up on my gas Solo, solo, it's just myself and my shadow. Talk to myself. How did that whole come whole thing come about, and and why did you feel it was fit for you to sign up? See, like, well, man, um, man, uh, Loco done it, you know, Both of my nephews, me and Loco done it, um, been writing stuff together since 2012. Hmm. So, uh, you know, I even brought him out to my house in Vegas, and he lived with me for a while, and uh, we was just writing stuff and all that. So, you know, he been on it. A little infamous, coincidentally. I didn't discover that he rapped until the Lord of was passed away. His dad. Wow. It's like his soul went in him or some shit. So his dad never even really heard him rap? I, I don't know that. Okay. Not that I know. Not that he told me. Right. So it's like his soul went in him or something. But uh, wow. he looked and sound just like him. Within 
a month of him passing away. It's so weird. The mystical one. But um, I just, you know, I, I gave him a little time. You know, I gave him a few years, a couple of years or whatever. And then when I saw that they was ready and they did, was doing it on their own, then that's when I came and I signed them. Because these days, you can't. it's too hard to build artists up from scratch. It ain't like back in the day. You could do that back in the day. But these days, you can't. You know, you can't really do it. If a person ain't got something going on on their self, and they ain't got their social media and their music already popping on their own, it just, it costs too much money. To, so to was that another that. thing that did it for you? You saw that they, they was popping on their own. It wasn't like nepotism, you know what I'm saying? Cause they was your people. You actually saw them working. Yeah, they had to work. And they were bumping. Yeah, and they okay. was bumping. They had to do it. They had to show me that they wanted because a lot of people out here don't want it. A lot of people just see, yo, know, they see us riding down the street and you know Rolls Royces and shit like that, and they they think it's easy. Like no, they got been doing this for twenty seven years. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know it's not easy. Yeah. But uh, you you just have to make sure. And anything in life, I don't care if it's just a, 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 a lemonade stand. You got to make sure they got the work, the work in them because it's not gonna work out if it, if they don't. It makes I respect. <clears throat> All right, um, I want to speak on Lord Infamous real quick, man. Um. When, when I first heard Lil Infamous, I think it was in Memphis on Come With Me To Hell. And to me, that was my first experience of shock rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my God, I can't believe he just said that. Yeah. You being his, you know, producer, you know what I'm saying, and Kento and stuff. Has he ever said anything that just shocked you while y'all was recording? Like, hold on, man, what did you, what? Yeah, he did that a bunch. Yeah. Man, so many times, man, because he was full of... Full of shit, like you'd think he gonna, everybody would be sitting in the studio waiting to see how he gonna come on his raps. Cause you never know how he gonna come, how well, he gonna he start gonna off or, or whatever. He don't just, like some rappers like to cheat it, you know. No offense to no, no rappers that do this, but some rappers like to cheat it. I, I, we've all done it, I've done it. Where you start off your rap with the hook. It's just easy. All oh, right, like, yeah. Like if the hook said Teddy Club, or you come in Teddy Club, or oh, nigga better yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's, that's easy, <laughs> anybody can do that. But like, to come out with something like My name is the Scarecrow Folks who they approach They really don't know me too well I plan to feed it right back And say watch the spit as I empty the shells Body so smacking the mud Folks are so constantly donating blood I pull the side off of my coat pump it twice And watch it tear up your whole damn rug He just, he'll come Just with some different shit every time Every time You know, you only like He'll start this shit out like On some regular shit yeah. Uh, wow. Rest in peace, Lord Infamous. Yeah. Today's his birthday. Wow, man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Lord, Lord Infamous. Wow, that's amazing, man. I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. I see you signed another artist. You got uh, Weirdo King. Weirdo you know King. What I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out Weirdo. How did that whole thing come about? How did you go about signing Weirdo? Oh, uh, my agent brought me uh, brought uh, Weirdo to me like a few years ago, and I listened to him. And he was bumping, but uh, you know he wasn't he wasn't ready. He about in Memphis, Tennessee. And, uh, you know, I heard about him and I had been hearing about him for a while and uh, you know, he had some, some dope shit and he was already doing shows and rocking but he wasn't all the way ready so um, I just chilled back for a couple of years and all of a sudden he just up and emailed me this one song. They end up being his first single with me and him, Bingo. Mm -hmm. I'm finna crash out, nigga. Oh! Hey, grade, I dropped out of school. I was gonna fly. I cook more crap than mama cook the food. He emailed me that song, I was like, damn, that's jam. He's like, man, I'm ready now, I'm ready. And then I listened to a few songs he sent me, and then I signed him right there on the spot and flew in L.A. That's dope, man. And then we did the video and did the album. Next day, brother. Um, out of all of your celebrity friends, you know what I'm saying, who would your fans be shocked to know that you the coolest with? Like, damn, man, you know, you knew him. Or her. Paris Hilton. Y'all friends in real life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's my girl, girl. That is I've shocking. been on Paris' house a bunch of times. She lived right by me. But yeah, that's my girl, girl. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all. It's man. It's pictures of a video of me and Paris together, fucking all the way back 11, 12 years ago. You know, y'all was on TMZ together one time, but then they said he was hollering at us or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, okay, yeah. I think they, I like that. Paris Beauregard and all that. They okay. thought we was in a relationship, but we wasn't. That's just right, my, right. That's my, that's my homie. Not yeah. good. I want to touch on Coop's nigga uh, uh, briefly, man. Um, I was want to ask you, what was what was like your first time ever hearing Coop's nigga rap? Like, what was your thoughts after just hearing the rap for you? Like, how did that whole thing happen? 
You know what I'm saying? Damn, mama, got to put so careful, baby, Jesus Christ. I'm thinking, baby, yeah, I'm scoping, bitch, they ain't for real. Even with the hardest kid, you the hardest run up in them ditches. Man, what's up, bro? With my tongue, it's like a ton of freezes. Yeah, I was at the uh, movies. There's uh, the movies in uh, Whitehaven on Shelby Drive. Everybody used to go to the Southbrook Mall. And I, I ran into a. Uh, I ran into a uh, coop there. Uh, actually, I think it was my my girlfriend at the time, my son's mother, uh, one of his friends. Yeah, my 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 son's mother's uh, homeboy. He hooked me up with coop. He introduced us, and I heard coop at the uh, at the mall in the front of the movies rapping. I was like, damn, this dude hard. He's so different. Like, I don't know what the fuck he's saying right now, but it sounds cool. I like the melody. And uh, mm -hmm. and then that's why I took Coop. I took him out of a group home, and I moved him in my house with me. And uh, we just started working and made the Devil's Playground. So when you first place. heard the rap, did he sound like the Coop's nigga that we know with all the melodies yeah. and all the different? Yeah, he was like that. So he already had that. Yeah, he already had that. Damn, man, that's interesting, man. Because Coop grew up on rock music. Okay. He loved rock music. He didn't really listen to rap. I don't know if he ever listened to rap outside really? of our rap. I know my mom used to tell me, man, growing up, like sometimes people can feel death upon them, you know. And I, I saw in some of your interviews that uh, Pimp C was with you or at your house right before he passed. Do yeah. you remember if, was he acting any little weird or anything like that? Did you notice anything different or strange about him that night before he passed? Man, you know, um, I kind of did, but I don't. I don't really want to speak on it. But uh, I kind of did. But I think he was just more tired from all the traveling. Mm. And then they told. I think when he died, uh, they found a pres some prescription medicine in the room uh, that he was taking. I don't remember what they said it was. So maybe it was. It was that prescription okay. medicine or whatever. But now nah, he was good. You know, he just seemed like he was uh, a little tired. But he was like, man, we, I ain't going nowhere till we finish this song. And uh, he didn't leave my house till like 9 in the morning. Did you guys finish the song? Morning. Yeah. Really? It's, on, uh, it's on the last three six months of the album. It was called Riding Something. Okay. Uh, Riding. That, that song was hard. Choices, man. You know, we love y'all uh, acting, you know what I'm saying? We love the movies you guys had. What, uh -huh. Doing any more movies or another Choices? Or what's going on with that? I uh, mean, I wrote another Choices. Man, Juicy wrote Choices 3, but it, it'll never come out. <laughs> <laughs> I got drop. a script at home, though. Somebody went by. It'll never, it'll never come out, man. Most likely it won't. But, yeah. We, but we made it. We wrote it, though. It's, it's written already. We wrote Choices 3, and we wrote another movie that was like a movie kind of about the group. And, um, and uh, the only game, you know, probably never come out. You never know. So you guys was going to do a movie on the group, would you have actors playing you or would you guys yeah, play us? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah we wouldn't act that ourselves. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like Prince of Purple Ryan, he played himself. He yeah, he was young, right. too. <laughs> he could do that. <laughs> Man, look. To me, Smoked Out, Loked Out is the greatest mixtape ever. A lot of people say man trap or die is the greatest mixtape ever, you know what I'm saying? Before trap or die, it was smoked out, loped out. Yeah. But did you know that you guys were making a, a complete classic during you was during that time you was making it? No, not really, man. You know, we just we just used to make music just for the for the fun of it, man. We didn't really care about making no money or nothing. We was just making making the music. And um No, I didn't know. I knew that shit was jamming though. I like that right. motherfucker jamming. Like that. <laughs> Super classic, classic yeah. mixtape, man. All right, uh, lastly, man, Tales. You know, Irv Gotti got the show Tales on BET. And the show basically, um, I guess they, they re do, they, they reenact songs, but they they make visuals of the songs and stuff like that. Wow, that's yeah. dope. I never if, seen it. If, they was to ever, if you was to ever do an episode on Tales and could redo a song that you guys made or whatever, what song would you like to see come to life? Like a video? Yeah, like an actual, like, they making it like movies and stuff like that. Damn, that's a good ass fucking idea. Like Biggie had a song, uh, I Got a Story to Tell. They would redo that. They have actors in it and stuff like that. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. So 
And that's an hour show or thirty minutes. I don't show? know. I don't know the time limit. Like it'll be really it's long. on BT. You know what I'm saying? He's doing his thing with it. They redid a lot of stuff. Mary J. Blige and Met the Man. You all I need. They made that an episode. Damn, that's yeah. cool. If they, they need do an episode, y'all. Yeah. Cool. Um, I would probably do a one of my favorite songs of ours is a uh, uh, the Wanna Be Like. I, I, I wanna dress yeah, like, wanna yeah. around like, wanna be like, rap yeah, like, be yeah, 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 like, yeah, that'd be a pleasure. Uh, yeah, I wrote this song. I, I would wanna, um, I would probably wanna see something like that. I could see something like that. Yeah, it would be funny though. There's people trying to dress like you and act like you. It would be, it'd be fun. All right, last but I ain't gonna take up too much of your time, man. Can you go ahead and give everybody, man, your social media, man, see how they can get up with you and talk about some of the projects that's coming, man, Skeleton, man. Yeah, make sure y'all holler at me, man, social media, man, my Instagram, man, my Twitter is at DJ Paul KOM, letter KOM as in King of Memphis, and uh, Snapchat DJ Paul KOM 36, and uh, Facebook DJ Paul KOM official. And also check out my YouTube, you know what I'm saying? YouTube.com slash DJ Paul KOM TV and YouTube.com slash DJ Paul BBQ TV. Go on and learn something. How to cook your woman something, nigga. <laughs> man, you already know what time it is, man. It's your boy Courtney Mocky Johnson. I'm checking up out this jump, man. Hip hop with the DJ Paul, man. I'm signing up out this jump. Yeah. Yeah.